Hi everybody, Martin at Flicking Feathers here again. Today I'm tying a bass fly. Uh, it's a rattle crayfish. Nice wee rattle. Um, size 2, it's a sort of medium size one, it's about uh, 2 and a half inches overall. I also tie these without a rattle. Um, this one's got no rattle. Silent. So sort of depending on the conditions, you can, one might work better than another. So I'm going to start. This is a size two. Uh, Gamma Katsu B10S in the vise, and this is some uh, UTC 140 and brown olive. And I've, I've waxed it quite heavily to make it kind of grippy. And I'm going to take my thread right round the bend. And then back to the... Back to up near the eye. And then I'm going to add my weight. For that I'm using a medium lead dumbbell. Obviously, if you're tying a larger crayfish, you know, if you're using a large size body and a bigger hook you might want to use a larger eye or obviously smaller as well um, just to suit the conditions and the depth of water you're fishing you could make this heavier if you want like a smaller more compact fly as well so Get the bead chain, nice and oh, sorry, the dumbbells on the bead chain. Get them nicely positioned. Leave yourself a good bit of room in front, and then you're ready to attach your rattle. This is just a fly rattle, Pyrex rattle, standard size, four mil, and then just. Lash that down securely. See the by waxing your thread by waxing your thread this it makes this much easier. There's no any sort of tendency for the for the thread to slip on the Pyrex or anything. And then just same as you do with your dumbbells, take some wraps around the base of the of the between like the shank and the rattle just to help secure everything and then make sure make sure it's all sitting straight check it and then slather it with super glue I've got plenty of super glue in here just I mean, this is quite a big rough fly anyways and there will be plenty of thread drops but you cannot over glue this so I'm going to take my thread round and I'm going to start my dubbing this is a Sibai Nymph Dub in, in beige mixed with some orange Sibai Spectra Flash Dubbing and you can see that I'm off of the tacky thread now I'm onto the factory wax stuff which gives you a bit of play I'm going to build up a nice ball of dubbing here and just run your thread through it don't need to, you don't really need to worry about much neatness just get a, a good ball to support the the head end of the, the craw body
Now at this stage, I like to I'll take my crawl body. This is the hairline. Was it Cohen's creatures? Pat Cohen or R S Superfly? They come white. You just colour them up with a pen. The version that I had in the vice before was uh, black and purple for more coloured water. This is a sort of light brown, olive mottled for uh, sort of clearer, clearer conditions. So I'll just take the hook off the vice. Make sure there's no any wet glue. Take the hook off the vice and carefully just pierce that in the middle, right between the claws. Get that in there. Always being careful not to stick to your super glued hook just in case there is any. And then you can, at this stage, you can sort of test it, see where the bump is, and that's pretty good. You can see there it comes, the dubbing. The dubbing comes to just a bit in line with the space before the legs start, which is exactly where you want it. Um, so, right, I'm ready to add my rib, so I'll just take a wee hair clip and hold that out of the way for now. And I'm going to grab some nylon. Heavy nylon, something like 15, 20 pound, something like that. I'll do fine. I like a good, robust rib. Get that tied in. And then I'll fold the end back, just for a bit of extra security. Get it well covered up. Now it's fairly simple, I just, I'm just going to bang on a lot of dubbing. Up the body here, to right behind the dumbbell eyes. That is a fairly dubbing intense fly this. But it does work. Um, So I'll just make sure I get that built up nice and nice and thick. I want to as far as possible cover that transition area. But that just gives an extra pad on the the inside of the hook just to again just to help support that um ultra sweat body. Now I can take away my hair clip and oh, stretch it, pull it, push it, pull it, get it sitting where you want. Then you can take a, your first turn the rib so that it falls in the slot behind what's the head section of the crayfish. You see that there. Get that nice and tight. Don't be don't be afraid to pull on it. That's why you use the heavy nylon. Then lift the body. Take a few turns back. And get your next turn right in behind these legs. Next turn in the next crease. And pull it, pull it nice and tight. Another one in here. One in the back of the, and behind the eyes. Lift the tail. And then, oops, catch off that nylon rib. Make sure it's nice and secure. Fold it back. Tie it in, doubled over.
and there's a sort of basic crayfish. So the next thing is uh, rubber legs, which I'll just grab it. Uh, I actually use um, legs from. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I actually use legs from a spinner bait um, skirt. If I could find them. And you want about eight legs. Oops. So if I cut that in half, that's four. And these will be slightly longer than the others. And I just leave these tags. I'm not going to fold the I'm not going to fold these legs. Um, I'm just going to tie them in nice and tight. The reason being, I found that they sort of they stand up better if I do this. And too shorter on this side. Shorter on the other side. And tighten all that up. Plenty of tight wraps of thread. And then you can come in. Just give that a wee stretch. And that will go in close. The last thing I like to do is uh, stick on a weed guard. You can leave this out if you like, but it does. I mean, I know some people say they reduce your hookup rate, but I don't. I'm not convinced that. I think the the advantages the advantage of a weed guard far outweighs any potential disadvantage. I think, I think there's maybe a tendency to blame it if you miss a strike or something. So, just a loop on nylon, tie it in, in front and behind the nylon, slide it up, and take a few more lock and turns. Then you'll notice the nylon is curving across itself, which is not really very good. So. What we do, I'll come up, watch these legs, I'll just get my, my hair clip again. Really handy these, these wee, wee hair clips. So I'll take my thread twice around the nylon, pull it back, and my thread's move, coming in the opposite direction. I'll take two turns to lock it. And I'll do the same. One, two, and then that's me back in my sort of correct direction, if you like. And I'll just pull these tight, snip them off, taller than the taller than the hook. I just use you know twenty. 20, 30 pound. It doesn't need to be really stiff. All you, all you need to do is just have enough to push some grass out, out of the way, stop it getting into the hook bend. And then I'll uh, finish this by hand because it's easier to reach over the weed guard. I'll do two just for security. This is going to be bumping along the bottom. And amongst rocks and stuff, so it's a good idea to give it a double whip. Trim the thread. Make sure that tails are sitting the way you like it. Sorry, just leave that. And then the 
fly's basically done. All that's left now is just to come in with some Velcro. Shoot, that's a bit shaggy. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. I'll maybe come in and sort of go over this a wee, a wee bit again with some uh, some marker pens just to model it up a bit better. I, I often find when I tie with them that um, the ink sort of seems to fade. Just I don't know if it's because you're stretching and pulling at the at the hide or whatever. Just finish this off with some head cement. Plenty. Don't be shy, but just get it lashed in there. And then the last thing is now that I've sort of brushed this out to the sides, you don't really want too much bulk or fuzz on the underside. So Just come in and sort of snip that, and the same, just run your hard as nails or whatever. Let that soak in. Just get a rub with your thumb. And that sort of keeps the bottom reasonably smooth, stops any fuzzy bits coming up, which interfere with the, the sink of the fly and there you go I hope that was useful hope you enjoyed it that was a it's just a, a rattling cr crayfish there we go just a wee bit of, kind of a bit of olive there just to mix up the colour a wee bit so I hope you liked that if you fly fish for bass I'd encourage you to tie some of these up. They work, they work for, they work for largemouth, and they work for smallies. Um, pretty, pretty easy to tie, really. I mean, a wee bit time-consuming, but. So, um, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Tight lines, guys. See you later.